Okay, welcome everyone. Mr. Miltenberg, would you like to introduce your student who's going to do the pledge? Yes, I'm happy to introduce uh, Jeremiah to lead us in the pledge today. So I think you'll have to unmute yourself and then we're ready to go. Hi, my name is Jeremiah Gellingham. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to a flag of the United States of America and to a public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Please be seated. Great job, Jeremiah. Thank you. I'll see you later. Okay, hey, welcome everyone to our parent information uh, session for the families of Aquabog Elementary School. I'm Christine Tona, I'm the interim superintendent. I'd like to introduce those that are on our panel today. Uh, we have with us Dr. Maria Castamatha, our director of ELA, and Denise Stevenson, our director of ENL and World Languages 5 through 12. She'll also be serving as our moderator. We have Ryan Jacobellis, our director of facilities. Terry Culhane, our Director of Security. And most of you probably know Mr. Miltenberg and Mr. Carlson, your principal Everybody. and assistant principal. Mr. Miltenberg, do you wanna say a few words before we start? Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to be reopening our school in September. And uh, we know there are a lot of questions out there. We've been working really hard to get ready. So uh, we're happy to be able to share uh, that information with you today. Thank you. So we know that this is a very difficult decision for families. Uh, Re-entry is not easy. Um, we, we've been working uh, as a district and as a school to put together a plan and we want to share with you today uh, what that plan looks like. Uh, we know you have a lot of questions. We're going to give you the opportunity at the end of the session to uh, type in some questions. So I'll be giving some uh, general information and then Mr. Miltenberg and Mr. Carlson will share with you some specific information related to Aquabog. So I will share my screen. All right, uh, you might wanna wait until we're uh, halfway or three quarters of the way through the presentation um, to type in your questions because we may answer your questions before you uh, actually enter them. But when the time comes, you can click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or a desktop or a cell phone. Uh, if you're on an iPad, that will be at the top of the screen. You'll type your question and then we'll read it aloud uh, later on and answer. So for our elementary students, families had a difficult choice to make. You had to choose between a hybrid model or a full virtual model. Now the reason uh, why we can't bring students in five days a week for full instruction, in-person instruction, is we don't have the space and we don't have the staff. We want nothing more than to bring our students back full time. Uh, we do hope that this, we, we know that this situation is temporary and we are hopeful that at some point during the school year, uh, we will be able to bring more students together at one time. Um, we have to keep this uh, limited because of the social distancing requirements that we have uh, throughout the state. So the hybrid model will consist of two cohorts or two groups of students. One group will come to school in person on Monday and Tuesday, and the other group will come on Thursday and Friday. Uh, those students will see their teacher all day. They will um, spend almost all of their time in their classroom. Their specials will push into the classroom, so that's art, library, music. Uh, as if the weather cooperates, physical education will be held outside. Uh, if not, it will be pushed into the classroom unless the gym is able to be used. But again, students will need to socially distance uh, six feet when they're in the classroom and um, 12 feet when uh, they are in physical education classes. Uh, breakfast and lunch, Mr. Miltenberg and Mr. Crossan will share specifics about that shortly, 
but uh, we are looking at the possibility of some rotation through the cafeteria, uh, depending on the size of the cafeteria each building, so that the students do get a break for lunch from the classroom sometimes where they can go into a larger space. Uh, recess, and I mentioned physical education, will be outside as often as possible. On the, two, on the three days that the students are not in person, they will be learning from home. Our teachers, the, the classroom teacher that they're with when they're in person, will be able to um, spend about 20 to 30 minutes each day where they'll be able to log in through Google Meet and the students will be able to log in and they'll be able to just touch base for the day, uh, perhaps get some direction as to uh, lessons that need to be completed. Uh, please know that that time may be at any point during the school day because uh, the, Mr. Miltenberg and Mr. Carlson are creating a schedule where we can have coverage of other teachers that can um, cover the classroom teachers so they can come out and, and do that Google Meet check-in. So it will not happen uh, for everyone first thing in the morning. Uh, we, we just can't do it all at the same time. Uh, we will be using platforms such as uh, Seesaw for grades K1 and 2 and Google Classroom for grades 3 and 4. And um, when students are home on remote instruction, they should log into those platforms every day. Uh, under the hybrid model, when the students see their teachers in person for two days, they will be giving them some direction as to what they need to work on over the next three days that they are home on, on remote instruction, as well as putting assignments in to Seesaw or Google Classroom. For those families that are opting for a full remote or a full virtual model, the students will be grouped by grade level. And in some cases, there will be students um, from different buildings uh, grouped together. They will have a teacher available to them throughout the day. And uh, it may be a teacher from Aquabog, it may be another Riverhead teacher, but they will all be elementary certified teachers. Um, they, the teacher will do live check-ins through Google Meet throughout the day, as well as assigning lessons through either Seesaw or Google Classroom. On remote instruction days, both for the hybrid students and the full virtual students, there will be recorded lessons posted. Um, and just to remember that we don't want our elementary students on computers and on the screen all day long. We don't think that that's um, the healthiest way uh, for them to, to learn. So in many cases, we're encouraging the teachers to, to do assignments that um, take the student away from the screen and allow them to complete projects, perhaps multi-day projects, uh, do some discovery, uh, in, and then come back and share with the teacher what they've learned. So um, we are being very flexible about families that decide that maybe uh, hybrid is not for them or full remote is not for them. So we do ask you to have patience with us. Uh, it'll probably take five school days, maybe a couple more or less to uh, make that switch for you. But uh, we do encourage if you do wanna uh, change your uh, manner for education, either hybrid or full remote, that you let Mr. Miltenberg or Mr. Carlson know and they will take care of that. Elementary educational services will still continue both in person and remote. So we are providing AIS services in reading and math, resource room services, English as a second language, English as a new language services, as well as uh, services for our special education students um, that uh, may receive speech or OT, PT, um, counseling services, those will happen as well. Our self-contained students, and we have students at Aquabog that are in self-contained classes, they will attend in person four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, so that we can best meet their IEP goals and the services that are uh, listed on their IEP. For grading and attendance, we're going back to traditional report cards. We know in the spring we did issue modified progress reports in June. Um, the report card uh, for the 2020-21 school year will be issued on a trimester basis with the same uh, grading that was done in the past. So students will receive report cards in December, March, and June. Attendance uh, will uh, be taken every day, regardless if it's in-person or remote. Obviously, in-person attendance is going to be much simpler. So if the student is present, the teacher will mark the student present. 
For those that are um, on the hybrid model and it's their remote day or the full virtual model, as long as the student logs into Seesaw or Google Classroom once each day, they will get credit for attendance. So it can be at any time. We recognize that families um, may not be able to have their students um, on the computer learning at, at home at the same time each day. Every family is different as to what supports they can give to their children at what time of day. So um, attendance can be taken, uh, can be credited at any point during the school day. And just remember that the activity is the attendance piece. As long as they log in, they get credit for attendance. It's the effort that the students put in that will um, dictate what the report card grade will look like. So um, we talked about cohorts a little bit. In K through six, we're looking to keep siblings from, or uh, students in the same household in the same cohort, unless families request otherwise. Thank you to all the families who completed our survey. Uh, the principals are working very hard through that information to uh, accommodate requests that were given. If you did not get an opportunity to complete the survey, please call the building and uh, the information will be taken over the phone from you so that we know that what your wishes are. Um, so again, siblings, uh, K-6 will be grouped together either Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday. Mr. Burke at Pulaski uh, has been working closely with Mr. Miltenberg and the other K-4 principals to uh, work to, to make that work for families. In grades 7 through 12, that they're using a different rotation. They are on a six-day cycle because we have so many students in each class. We go up to 30, even 32 students um, in, a, in some classes at the high school and middle school level. That in order to social distance six feet apart, we needed to make three cohorts of students. So those students are going to rotate on a six day cycle, two consecutive days. So one cohort, if there's no holidays in a couple of weeks time, one cohort will attend on Monday and Tuesday. The next time they'll meet again will be the following week, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the third week, Wednesday and Thursday. So that will be tricky for families that are relying on older students to provide childcare for the elementary students. And uh, we recognize that challenge. So if you do have students, um, more than one student in grades seven through 12, and you have an elementary child as well that needs childcare, you may want to consider splitting your uh, secondary students into two cohorts. So there's a greater chance for one of those students to be home when your elementary student is home. So on 7 through 12, those cohorts will be determined alphabetically, A through F, G through N, O through Z by last name. But there will be some tweaking uh, as the secondary principals are working to make sure there's no more than 12 to 14 students in any class uh, so that proper social distancing can occur. Specific information as to who your child's teachers are and supply lists and other information about the school year, including uh, calendar information, will all be sent home. Uh, they'll be put in the mail by next Friday, so you should receive them um, shortly thereafter. So uh, the, the buildings are busy readying that information. So we expect all staff and students to wear masks almost all the time. Uh, and we do that because it's uh, for the health and safety of all of our students and staff members. So these masks or face coverings need to be worn from the moment the student steps on the school bus or when they're dropped off at school, when they're in the hallways, uh, using the bathrooms, in the classrooms, um, as well as if they do go into the cafeteria to pick up lunch on the lunch line. It's when they're sitting down to eat their lunch that obviously they need to take their masks off um, so they can uh, keep their mask off while they're eating. And again, the students will be six feet apart while they're eating meals. Um, when they go out for recess um, or physical education, they will need to maintain social distance as well. And there will also be mask breaks. And um, there'll be three minute mask breaks every half hour on the elementary level. So um, again, the students will have to socially distance during those mask breaks. And we ask that parents and guardians send the children in with some extra masks just in case. 
Um, there's always a possibility, especially with elementary students, that a mask could get lost or it could get uh, soiled and it would not be able to be worn. Um, if a student arrives uh, at the bus stop to get on a bus or arrives at school without a mask, we will provide masks for the students so they always have a mask. Um, just a reminder, I'm sure that at home the students are not wearing masks very often and in the past six months, uh, spending a lot of time with family, uh, they, they're probably not wearing a mask for this length of time. So this will definitely be an adjustment. So it's important to keep in mind that wearing a mask for many hours a day uh, will require those masks to be washed a little more often than they might be uh, when you're home and you're only uh, visiting stores a couple of times a week uh, and needing that mask for short periods of time. So just please keep that in mind. So as I mentioned, the health and safety is our top priority during uh, this time, as always, but uh, it's heightened certainly during uh, this pandemic time. So if your child has any symptoms of COVID-19 or fever over 100 degrees, please keep your child home from school. And we recommend that you contact your medical provider for information to determine if COVID-19 testing is needed. If a student becomes ill during the school day, uh, the student will be sent home. So a, a parent or guardian or an emergency contact will be called and uh, you will be advised to take the child to see your medical professional. The student will not be permitted back to school without a letter from the physician or the medical facility stating that they are not infected with COVID-19 and that it is safe for them to return to school activities. Uh, while they're waiting to be picked up, each of the buildings has an isolation room uh, where students that are exhibiting COVID-like symptoms will need to wait in the isolation room to be picked up because we will still be using the nurse's office to um, assist students that are not exhibiting COVID-like symptoms or who maybe have injured themselves or need to take medicine. And so we, we don't want um, this, those students to be possibly infected by a student that has uh, COVID-like symptoms. Uh, if a student or staff member tests positive for COVID-19, the testing lab will automatically notify the Suffolk County Department of Health. We may not get that information right away, so we are asking families to please let the school know if your child tests positive for COVID-19. And then the district will work with the Suffolk County Department of Health to conduct contact tracing to, um, to assist in determining who else may need to uh, quarantine or be notified. So again, um, we will be giving, uh, providing temperature checks upon entry to school, uh, not when the students are boarding the buses, because once a student is at the bus stop and the bus pulls up, we are responsible for that student. So um, if, if the temperature was checked at that time and the student had a, a fever, we would still have to transport the student back to school to get picked up by um, a parent guardian or con uh, emergency contact. So, on the bus, the students will have masks on and they will be socially distanced. Uh, siblings will be permitted or students in the same household will be permitted to sit together. And for the most part, the other students will all be one to a seat with a mask on. Um, in the buildings, there'll be frequent cleaning throughout the day and then a deeper disinfection will happen after school and evenings on a daily basis. Our custodians, we're very grateful to all of the work that they've been doing and we know that this will be a challenging time. Uh, but again, their priority too is to keep everyone safe and healthy. Uh, we have purchased barriers for small group instruction uh, and testing. So um, there may be in the classroom, if the teacher wants to do small group instruction uh, and brings the students closer together, they will still be in masks, but they will also be able to use the barriers to um, provide that small group instruction. We also know that students that see small group service providers or see a social worker or a speech therapist or a psychologist for testing, they will also have the opportunity to um, have that bar barrier for extra safety and they will also be wearing a mask whenever possible. And the classrooms are being set up with the desks all facing in the same direction, six feet apart. Uh, they've been measured according to the standards that we're told that we need to measure by. And um, you know, this will be an adjustment for everyone to have even our youngest students in individual desks uh, and not at tables. But again, we're very hopeful that this is a temporary situation 
um, and that we'll be able to go back to uh, full-time instruction and normal business as soon as possible. So our hallways will be marked to control traffic flow and promote social distancing. This is an example from the high school of what uh, the hallways will look like. Here's some more photos. So um, as the buildings are prepping the classrooms because they have to remove some furniture, they will then move to the hallways and mark them up so that uh, when the students arrive, we can promote uh, proper social distancing. Computer devices, uh, many of you have borrowed school devices in the spring and you still have those devices and that's perfectly fine. Um, we will be distributing Chromebooks to those in need in grades three through 12 and iPads to those in need in grades K through two. Um, very shortly uh, into probably the very beginning of September that will happen. Um, we are ordering, we have ordered additional devices. So, um, in some cases, for example, second grade students that are going into third grade, they currently have an iPad. We want to be able to make that swap so that they have a Chromebook. And we'll be doing that uh, shortly and a schedule will be coming out soon from our technology department, uh, letting families know uh, the process for picking up a device or swapping a device. Um, a silver lining in all of this, because we recognize the need for many, many students to have technology access is we're on a path to have all of our students in the district to have a one-to-one -one device. We think by the start of the 2021-22 school year, a year from now, that we will, and hopefully at that point, we're completely back to normal operations. We'll be able to be in a position where students will have a district assigned a Chromebook or iPad that they will be able to bring back and forth from home to school and they will be able to use that device to uh, enhance their educational experience as a, as a, as a resource. So um, we're happy that we're able to provide those devices. So um, again, I'm going to turn this over at this point to Mr. Miltenberg and Mr. Carlson, but you can start thinking about questions that you may have, but again, they may answer them. But when you're ready to type in a question, that Q&A button is at the bottom of your screen, unless you're on an iPad and it's at the top of the screen. Thank you. All right, so Mr. Miltenberg, I'm turning this over to you. You're muted. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, we're very grateful to have you here, and we are so happy to be reopening our doors uh, in September and getting back to doing what we love to do. So I'm going to speak on the big picture of reopening Aquabog, and Mr. Carlson's going to take you through a little bit of what your child's day might look like if they're going to be joining us in person in the fall. So. If you know anything about Aquabog, you know that our whole philosophy goes back to the idea of the team uh, and being collaborative. And we just wanna thank all of our staff, families, uh, students and community members for all of their support over the last six months. We really could not have gotten through this without you. So we thank you. We also wanna thank our reopening committee that has been working so hard over the past couple of weeks to put together um, our full handbook that will answer any and all of your possible questions. And you can see uh, scrolling through it here that it is extensive, um, but we just wanna be able to make sure that um, we can put everyone at ease because we know there are, there are a lot of questions out there about what school is going to look like. Uh, you can get the most up-to-date information on our website, which links to our distance learning site that you can see here. And we also have a uh, presence on Facebook. So while school was closed, I posted uh, videos every day of our pledge and our morning announcements. And we heard from so many parents who told us how important that was to keep their child connected to school. Um, so we will absolutely be continuing that in the fall. Any day that your child is at home, whether it's uh, because they're fully remote or in the hybrid model, they can join us every morning for the pledge and the birthdays and the morning announcements because when you are in elementary school, there's nothing more important than your birthday and getting your birthday recognized. So you do not have to worry about that. 
Um, so I, I want to tell you about some of the principles that have been guiding us as we go toward reopening. Obviously, the first is safety. Uh, we are just working so hard on all the particulars to make sure that school is safe. We know there are times when it will make things less convenient uh, for everyone, and we know there will be times when it seems like we are really erring on the side of caution, and, and that's just because there is nothing more important to us than just making sure we keep all the students and the staff safe. Um, the next piece is support. We want this to be a welcoming and supportive place for our kids to come back to. We know that for some of our students, this will be a breeze and it'll be like they never left. And for others, it could be a really challenging transition. So we are really focused on the social and emotional well-being of our students. We want to support them and to support you through this process. And we are still focused on, despite all these challenges, making school fun. We know that school is going to look different, but we believe it can still be fun. It can still be exciting and still be a place that our kids want to come to every day. Uh, flexibility is going to be so important to us. We know that despite our best laid plans, we will have to adapt as variables arise. So we will try to be flexible and we appreciate your flexibility as well. And uh, finally, the idea of innovation for us. We know that um, we have incredibly innovative teachers. They have really embraced new techniques and new technologies and learned and learned from each other. Um, and I learned so much from watching what they've come up with over the past few months. And I know they've been in a lot of trainings uh, over the summer um, because at the end of the day, we want this to still be an outstanding educational experience even though we know that it's going to look different than the traditional school model. So um, Mr. Carlson's going to walk through a bit of what school will look like from uh, a kid's eye view. Thanks so much, Mr. Milton Berg. And as we got ready to be with you today, you know, thinking just about the, the angst that a, a family might feel, a child might feel, we wanted to just take a few minutes and just really try to put on the lens of a child and walk them through the day. So if they're nearby, uh, first thing, hello. I hope they're watching with you. If they're nearby or you're going to watch this in a recording, please bring them near. And I'm going to do my best to um, pretend that I'm eight years old or so. Uh, again, so when your child arrives, whether it's by bus, whether it's by drop-off, wheel, temperature screen, as Ms. Tona mentioned earlier. Um, as far as your home routines, well, we're really the last ones to try to put our input on that. Um, I know as, as a parent, we're going to try to screen at home before the kid gets on the bus or before they get in the car to come to school. Um, we're prepared if your child arrives at school with a fever uh, temperature, we're, we're prepared for that. But Reducing that and keeping that volume down is um, certainly something that is in everyone's interest. So we ask that you do that. Um, besides that, when they get here, you'll notice that the children will arrive by bus in our normal bus loop. We'll be able to meter the way that the children come off the bus so that they can enter the school through the main entrance, um, like they always have, as safe, uh, as safely as can be. If you're dropping off, that's going to feel a bit different. So instead of dropping off on Edgar Avenue, we're going to establish a drop-off point in the Edgar Avenue parking lot. So there'll be plenty of staff out there, there'll be markings out there, and we know that it'll be a slow process the first uh, day or two as we get used to it, and um, you'll drop your child off there, we'll screen, they'll enter the school safely and proceed to, uh, to class. I have gotten some questions about morning care. Uh, Aquabog Elementary is planning on very much on, on offering it and information on that will uh, be forthcoming. As your child gets into the classroom, um, breakfast will be much as it always was for our kindergarten friends. The teachers will have the breakfast in bulk waiting for them as they always have. Our uh, older students will check in with the teacher and will be um, well supervised and socially distanced in the hallways as they pick up breakfast um, through marked spots in the line and return to class to eat it. And hopefully we can do all of that right in time for, uh, for the pledge and announcements, which you know, we'll target for, for 9.05, understanding, especially if you're on a remote day and you're checking in with us on Facebook. Um, we might not quite be ready for that right at 9.05 first, but bear with us and that's uh, certainly our aspiration. 
So this is um, not something that I just searched on Google for an image for. This is one of our classrooms. So I know for me, yeah, even as an assistant principal, it felt good to see it in the flesh. So to take those uh, regulations that Ms. Tona was describing and to say, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that's going to look like, um, here it is. Um, you can see here that the desks are spaced. We've got um, 12 desks in that classroom along with the small group instructional space, which will have dividers installed by the time we see the boys and girls. As far as the school day, I just wanna, the academics are going to be as rigorous as ever. So while well, we've got some assessing to do and we've got some, some planning to do once, once we do that assessing, um, we're gonna be ready to go as far as the regular academic day goes for kids. Instructional settings will be focused in that classroom, at least initially, as we explore how to make it safe in other places. So uh, talking about a math AIS, so we've gotten questions about um, a, a therapy, let's say. We'll do our best to have them in the small group instructional space unless and until we're able to get it safely managed elsewhere in the school. Um, we'll also really be focusing on the outdoor learning spaces. Aquabog is blessed with um, a couple beautiful courtyards and a couple other uh, really accessible and well-supervised outdoor learning spaces. We're working with our, our PTO and our teachers and our reopening team on making sure that those are accessible as possible um, in order to give options to all of our educators. And Ms. Sona talked about those specials. Um, they'll be a, a part of the remote experience and the physical experience, and we'll do our best to balance those so that we get a, a flavor of something in person and also then carry on that learning remotely as well. And I want to spend a, just a, a minute of your time on kind of some school day routines. So I think the mask breaks were explained earlier. So I'm going to meals first, we talked about breakfast. Um, lunch right now, we are in a position, thank you very much to Mr. Colhane, who was, who was on the call, who came and mapped out how we could safely have uh, nearly 60 children at a time in the cafeteria. Mr. Miltenberg and I are running through some, some ways to get all of the children in there for lunch uh, every single day. So at this time, that is, that's certainly our plan and the children will be um, at least six feet away as they eat their lunch. A recess is happening. The, the different permutations of recess, we're still exploring it. And certainly once we have uh, the whole team back together on um, some of our superintendents conference days, we're going to dive deep in, into providing as much um, access and socialization and activity as, as we can make safe. Mass breaks were addressed and um, when it comes to bathroom use, that will be again as similar as possible to the regular school day experience. Many teachers will take their classes in um, at large groups, one at a time, and be able to really, it's an educational component about how to meter them in and out of the bathroom, but when students need to use it on an individual basis, um, we believe that that's possible. There'll be signage and instruction that if the bathroom has more than four children in it, there'll be uh, waiting spots distanced and marked in the hallway. After your child goes through um, their day and we arrive at dismissal, just a few points about dismissal. Um, one thing I, I learned right away about ACFOG is, is really that the family and the homeschool connection is so strong. We just wanna really um, continue to embrace and encourage that because the sooner that we know about maybe a, a non-traditional thing happening, whether it's a different kind of pickup or an appointment, the better that we can manage it. When signing out your child, other than at dismissal time. We just want to point out that for the time being, it'll be through the vestibule. The, our main office here, which is a little unorthodox, is uh, up and away from where you come in and in order to minimize um, unnecessary interaction between um, people outside and the kids inside, that'll all be managed through the vestibule and, and our folks up there. When it comes time to leave, 
the bus dismissal will be very similar, except Mr. Miltenberg and I will use our four quadrants of the school. We've got those, those four wings and we'll stagger the kids out for a classroom one wing, a classroom another uh, at, at one time and, and so on so that where there's not a backup and so that distancing can be maintained in the hallway to the best of our ability while children are masked. And when it comes to pickup, um, that, that's certainly been a big point of emphasis for us. We are working with the reopening building team, but I would expect it to look a lot like it always has in that we'll still be really matching up that child and the parent and it will take place in that same Edgar Avenue parking lot that you might have done drop off, but you will be parking and coming to. So that it will not be a delivery to, to the car model here. So details on that will come in um, the mailing that we've got coming out late next week, like Ms. Tony mentioned. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you so much. And I think we have time now to take some questions. All right, we're gonna get started. Um, we do have a couple of people that have asked the same question, so I'm going to combine them and just ask them one. So there was um, a request for a little clarification about the recording of lessons, particularly for the students that are on full virtual. Will those be recordings by the teachers or will they be YouTube uh, recordings? Yes, um, they'll be by the teacher. Um, we have had conversations that the teachers will be doing their own recordings. Um, they may, from time to time, use other resources from the internet to, to, to supplement their instruction, but the teachers will be making the contact and they will be making the, the recordings. It could also be, from time to time, uh, another teacher in the district, because we encourage our teachers, they always work together, they're, they're, they're a team. So there will be times that you know, third grade teachers might get together and say, you record this lesson, I'll record this lesson, and that per third person will record that lesson, and they'll be able to share and pool their resources. So we are encouraging that as well. There, uh, this question came in before the presentation, but looking for some clarification on the virtual check-ins and will these be at a set time? The concern is that some students are unreachable if they're um, being watched by someone else outside of their family. As long as the student checks in at some point during the, that day, um, the, on that date, it could be outside of school hours and that's fine. Uh, what are the times for Aquabog Kindergarten? 9.05 to 3.30. Okay. Um, if they pack a snack, what can't we pack? I don't think we have any anything that's related to school reopening that would be a limitation on that other than anything specific to uh, students' allergies. And a question about finding out about the teacher classroom and school days, which again, this was before the presentation and we know the mailing is going out. Um, so if a child, for attendance purposes, again, a question about if a student is not checking in during the day, um, but we've already explained that they can check in later and we're understanding of that. So once a parent chooses all day at home, um, are they required to stay with that until the school goes back to normal? Um, this way there's not back and forth. So we are allowing families to, um, to change their option if they wish. We just ask that uh, they give, let the school know. And um, it may take five to seven school days for, for that switch to happen. But we are prepared because we recognize that uh, some people, some families may make a choice now and, um, and decide seeing what the other choice is later. They may want to make that change and we recognize that. If my child was in the reading program last year, will she be receiving that from the beginning this year? Will her new teacher know she needs help? And how will evaluations be done this year? Our teachers do communicate and collaborate on that. So our reading department will assess students to begin the year. Um, it will look slightly different, obviously, just based on, you know, the guidelines that we're reopening school with. But you know, if that's on your radar and that's something you're concerned about, please just reach out to us directly and uh, we'll make sure we can get everything set up to start as quickly as possible. 
If a student is physically absent on hybrid model, can they virtually learn from home to make up for the absent physical day? They can definitely engage in the activities from home, but it would not count for official attendance purposes. And third and fourth graders use iPads or does it have to be a Chromebook? Um, the teachers will be using Chromebooks in grades three and four. Uh, if, if the student and the family feels comfortable navigating with an iPad and they're in third and fourth grade and they're able to do that, um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, just know that the teachers are looking to have the consistency, especially when they may need to reach out and assist the student with uh, navigating through the program, that it is easier if all of the students are using the same um, type of a device. We have a couple of questions about how the days are going to be decided. Is this by last name for K through four? What we took into account a lot of factors, um, including parent requests, as well as sibling issues, if there are siblings that need to be on the same day or siblings from uh, Pulaski. We also wanna have a balance within the cohort that's reporting on that day, just like we balance our classes across a grade level. Um, so if any parent has a concern about what day their child is gonna be reporting, just reach out directly to us and um, we can give you that information or if you need to request something, just let us know. There have been a couple of questions about how people can get a Chromebook or another device. How do we let the district know and was the survey enough um, but then other question, people who were not referencing the survey, so perhaps they didn't indicate on the survey that they needed a device. Yeah, if it was indicated on the survey, that should be fine um, because we have that information. If it wasn't on the survey or the person didn't submit the survey, reach out to the school and uh, more details about distribution of devices uh, will be uh, shared hopefully next week. Um, are all of the desks spaced six feet apart from the edge of the desk in all of the classrooms? And how many kids can fit in a class this way? Yes, the uh, student desks and tables have been set apart by six feet. And on average, about 12 desks in a, in a classroom, um, as many as 14 in some instances. And they were measured the way that um, the guidance said to measure? Correct, from edge, from edge to edge, not on center. Do you know at this point how many students have opted to be fully virtual? We have some information based on the surveys, but I know throughout this week the principals have been getting calls and emails from families. So um, at this point, I don't have exact numbers. After the survey, it was about 13% of the school district's population. Um, each grade level had different numbers. What will be needed for school supplies? So on our website right now, we have our grade level school supply lists, but um, as we get closer, our teachers will reach out. And once the assignments have been sent out to give you uh, a more you know, detailed view about what will, what will be needed, um, we're gonna have to be flexible again as the teachers navigate what can and can't uh, be stored in between the cohorts. Will parents need to wait at drop off for our child's temperature to be taken? Optimally, yes, we would, we would like that, but we don't want to back up traffic. So if you could just try and keep an eye on your child as they enter the building to make sure that they're uh, admitted in, that would be great. That would avoid us having to isolate the child and try and contact you via phone and have you come back and pick up the child. And it is recommended that um, you can take your own your child's temperature before they leave the house and if they have a temperature just please keep them home or if they're exhibiting any any symptoms that day they should stay home uh when will we find out which cohort cohort a child is in next week is there a certain number of hours a day the students will have to do work online that depends on each uh, child, how long it takes them to complete the work. Uh, the teachers will be mindful about the amount of work that's assigned. Um, so there's no requirement um, of how many hours that need to be completed. Can you switch out of hybrid at any point? I'm just concerned if anything changes and we no longer feel comfortable sending them into school. 
yes, we answered that question earlier. Um, we are allowing uh, flexibility, but we just ask for patience in um, giving us five to seven uh, school days to make that happen. Can students bring their home lunch in a lunchbox or a paper bag? Yes. Uh, will virtual students receive their teacher assignments at the same time as hybrid students? Um, we're hoping to. Uh, we're working <laughs> on that. That's definitely um, a challenge. The principals are uh, sharing the information about who the virtual students are. Dr. Kerner, you want to jump in at all on that? Yeah, sure. We are working on um, actually uh, letting, uh, working with the, the building principals, I should say, to determine which teachers will be the virtual teachers. Um, so we're hopeful to have that information solidified um, within the next few days. So. When will kindergarten screening take place? Mr. Miltenberg, you have the details or you want me to take that? Uh, you, well, we're still shooting to have kindergarten screening at, uh, to take place at the beginning of the year. Um, but we are using that the information, the information that we have on our kindergarten students to place them into classes at this time. Yes, the, the principals, we had conversations back in the spring about what kindergarten screening would look like um, because we couldn't bring the, the students into the building in May and June like we typically would. So that's been um, a plan in, in action for quite a while. So uh, everyone will be ready. Is free lunch available? I can, uh, I can take that one. Uh, breakfast and lunch is available for all students at Aquabog every day at no cost, uh, regardless of the family's ability to pay because of the community eligible provision. So students can bring their breakfast and lunch if they wish, or they can get breakfast and lunch at no cost uh, any day that they want. Um, there are a couple of questions about the first day of school. Um, but this one, if notices are going to be sent out on August 28th, how are we going to know if our child is supposed to attend on September 1st? And then what is the official first day of school this year? No children are in attendance on September 1st or 2nd. So uh, on Thursday, September 3rd, that will be the students that are assigned to the cohort that would meet on Monday and Tuesday. And the students that will attend on Friday, September 4th, will be the students assigned to the cohort that would typically meet on Thursday and Friday. And that information will be in the mailing that goes home next week. Um, is there going to be extra support for students and understanding, as this has been hard for some, adjusting to being home and a lack of social emotional support during the pandemic? Will there be more push in from the school counselors? We're working with our um, social worker and psychologist to make sure that we're ready because we know that there will be challenges for some students upon returning. Um, so it's really going to have to be all hands on deck for us in supporting our students to make this transition. And social emotional learning and support is going to be a big part of the classroom experience um, for every kid, whether, whether they're struggling with it or not. Um, so I'd say if that's something that you're concerned about, just reach out to us now. Um, and we can talk through it with you and we can make sure that we support you and your child through the process. If kids are eating in the classroom, does that mean my child cannot bring peanut butter and jelly? That is a very valid question. Um, but again, we're shooting for students to be eating in the cafeteria. Uh, this one is sending apologies. They joined a bit late, but what will the three virtual days look like for students? Will they be independent slash homework type days? There will be a check-in on each of those days with the teacher and um, there will be assignments, but a lot of it will be extensions from the two in-person days. And um, we're, we're in the process to um, the students will have their materials. For example, we have a math program. There's a student book for the math program that will um, be sent home. And the students that are on full remote will have to determine a, a pickup day for families to pick up their uh, any consumable textbooks that the students use at the elementary school. So that may not get communicated right away in the summer mailing next week, but we ask that everyone has patience with us. We, we're, we're waiting for the materials to arrive into the buildings and then uh, we'll have to come up with a system to uh, send it home with the students. 
what is going on at the school on Wednesday? And I guess Wednesdays generally? Yeah, so Wednesdays at the elementary uh, level, the students won't be in person. Um, it will be remote. The teachers will do a check-in with uh, the, the students, the hybrid students. And the teachers will be um, having meetings to discuss the needs of the students. They will be doing those check-ins. They will be recording lessons for, for the students to use on the remote days. They will be receiving professional development so that they can um, work on improving the, the art and craft of remote instruction. Uh, because when none of us on this call and none of the teachers at any of our buildings, when they were trained to become teachers, this wasn't part of the preparation, uh, learning how to do a remote instructional uh, day. So um, it's a learning process for everyone. And um, our teachers have been fantastic, uh, supporting each other in the spring, supporting each other throughout the summer. And um, they'll continue to support each other. And, and the district has been providing other uh, mechanisms for them to get training as well. So we appreciate everyone's patience and understanding as we all work together to try to provide the best possible education during these difficult times. This one's just a clarification that virtual students will also receive the workbooks they would have received in the classroom? Yes. Um, and then stress on the importance of putting pencil to paper to learn as well as to continue building on skills by writing questions. Um, a couple more questions about the teacher assignments and the cohorts, and I'm not sure if these questions came in after we had answered that question. Um, but so that the assignments are coming out next week, yeah. right? And the school supply lists as well. Well, uh, Mr. Miltonberg said they were already up on the website, but they may be adjusted. And I would just say to any parent who's concerned about the cohort, if you have a specific need that would that would require you to be in one or the other, just reach out and we can talk through that and accommodate you. Um, how are remote kids being assessed? Dr. Kerner, I see you. Yeah, I, I did unmute. <laughs> That's a good question. So um, as we mentioned earlier, we're working on assigning teachers to the virtual cohorts, and we will be working together with them uh, to determine uh, appropriate benchmark assessments that they'll be using, um, in addition to curriculum-based assessments to uh, determine uh, where the children are in their learning and uh, where they need to be. Another school local to us will be following a same type of school schedule as they have while virtual in school. For example, 8.30 to 9, morning announcements, 9 to 11, live instruction through Google Meets, snacks and breaks built in, 11 to 12 lunch, 12 to 2.30 specials. This consists of two 30 minutes and one 30 minute grade level social gathering and a 2.30 to 3 o'clock live student support with the core teacher. Google Meets can be recorded. Why aren't we doing something similar? Uh, right now we're um, putting together our program and the way that we're putting our program together is through recordings and live Google Meet check-ins. Uh, we will continually assess this, and if any changes can be made, uh, we will um, look to do that. But um, we've been working since the spring. We've had committees, and we've been designing a, a program that we think will work best for our district, and we will continue to reflect upon that and make changes as necessary. But I think at this point, we just need to uh, start uh, the process in September and start the school year. And, and we won't know what can be changed until we start to experience what we're doing. If recess is to happen outside, are the students going to be allowed on the outdoor equipment? And if so, what are the limitations? Yeah, at this point, we are not able to um, go on the playground just, just based on the sanitization and health and safety needs. And that's, that's really hard for us um, because the playground is such a big part of what we do, but we are working to find creative ways to still make recess uh, fun uh, and engaging for students. How will full virtual children be assessed at the beginning of the year to see if they need AIS services or any other services? So I, I can respond to that um, in, in part at least. Um, 
you know, we realize that there will be, the gaps will be larger, obviously coming back to school because of the, the time uh, that the children were put virtually. So we're working with our teachers to use, again, either the benchmark assessments that we'll be using, um, but in addition to that, some curriculum-based assessments, some diagnostic um, assessments based on where we know the children um, should be at the beginning of the school year. So uh, there'll be multiple measures used to determine um, AIS services and the like. Ms. Tona, I'm not sure if you want to jump in on that as well. Well, we're using the iReady assessment um, and they're working with us to uh, provide an option for us to use that assessment with students that are on full remote. So um, that will be administered to our students that are on the hybrid model when they're in person and we're working with them to determine a, a way because in the past they've told us that it was not for full remote, um, that it needs to be delivered in person. So um, we're going to, to work with them and figure out a way that we can have that information as well because that's a valuable tool for all of our teachers and our administrators to know where students are. How will my fully virtual student receive extra help? Fully virtual students will be assigned to a teacher that will be their teacher throughout the day. Um, and so I would encourage uh, once the school year starts, uh, parents can communicate with that teacher, teacher via phone or email um, to discuss the needs that the child has. And the teacher will be available throughout the day um, via Google Meet to work with small groups or individual students as needed. Will all children receive a device who need one? I know in the spring, some families told me they were denied a device. In the spring, um, I know that we were concerned. We didn't know how many students needed devices and we wanted to make sure we had enough for every family. And um, we were distributing devices for quite some time. Uh, it was a sudden closure. Now we're in a position where we have more devices we have more devices on order. So we do anticipate that if a family has three students and they all need a device, uh, we'll be able to distribute devices to all three of those students. We do ask you to, again, to have patience with us. Uh, I don't think that all of the devices are going to be available to be distributed immediately. So we are working on a plan for distribution and um, the suppliers, the vendors that we use to get devices, you can imagine, they are busy all across the country with schools everywhere looking for devices. So um, we're, we're hopeful that our order will come in as soon as possible, but we do have some devices uh, that are already in that haven't been distributed yet. So we're in a much better place than we were in the spring. Um, there's a question about maybe having a different supply list for students that are virtual and another question about school supplies being brought back and forth. Will they need their own box for their supplies to bring back and forth each day? Yeah, I know in speaking to our teachers, they are thinking hard about this because it is very different. And so the individual teacher will let you know what needs to be brought um, each day and what might be able to safely stay and be stored in the classroom. If a child is, an issue, is issued an iPad or Chromebook, will these come with cases? And are the parents responsible if the device breaks or if a screen cracks? I believe our technology department is working to put together an insurance uh, program um, for the devices. And I believe that they're ordering cases to go with the devices. Uh, one person is curious about the airflow within the classroom. Will you have open windows and HEPA filters to purify the air? Uh, if the teacher chooses to have the windows open to allow fresh air in, that, that's fine. That's, that's the teacher's choice, uh, depending on the temperature outside, of course. And the airflow will be increased into the rooms. Um, talked about this a lot. We're going to open the fresh air intakes as much as possible, as much as the system will bear. Um, we're not using HEPA filters. We are using some, some MERV uh, 11, 8 and 11s throughout the district. And kindergarten classrooms, I'm pretty sure they all have their own bathrooms. Mr. Meltenberg, do they have their, all have their own bathrooms? at? Uh, yes. Office? Yeah, they do. Okay. Uh, if a student has a clever badge or a QR code from last year, will it continue to work this year? 
Mr. Miltenberg, do you know that? I think it should, but we'll, we'd have to double check uh, with that, but I think it should. But it goes by their student login, so I would think it would yeah. be you know, the, the classroom teacher is going to be your point of contact on that, so they'll be able to support you with that. What will daily cleaning and deep cleaning look like, and is it a different chemical than what is normally used? So throughout the day, throughout the school day, when students and faculty are in the buildings, we'll be doing much more proactive surface cleaning throughout the day. Um, you know, door handles, um, even the soap dispensers and stuff like that will be sanitized throughout the day. Um, in the evening, it'll be a more of a, we're calling it detailed cleaning. Since there's less surfaces in the classroom, there's less desks in the classroom, there's less chairs, we'll be sanitizing those surfaces more thoroughly. Um, tops, bottoms, undersides of desks, um, undersides of chairs, surfaces like that. Uh, we are using chemicals that are known to be effective against this, against COVID, um, and we are enhancing our regular cleaning chemicals with some new ones that are recommended by the CDC and the Department of Health. How will students' social emotional health needs be met when fully virtual? <coughs> I can speak to that. Um, so we've been working with our staff, uh, faculty and staff, on. Um, resources, quality resources to use uh, with students who are in school and also on the virtual platform. So uh, we're actually really excited um, about the quality uh, programs that we have in place uh, that will also be interconnected with the, uh, the curriculum. So. Will full virtual teachers be responsible for one grade level or multiple grade levels? We're anticipating one grade level at this time. That's what we're planning for. Other districts local to us, as well as across Long Island, for children who are full virtual or even remote, are being provided with actual live teaching. I am not expecting our teachers to be teaching for hours live, but I do feel it is important to have live lessons, as I do not fear to feel it is fair or even possible <clears throat> for elementary level ages especially at the younger grades, to be able to remember their questions for when they have meets with their teachers. I find this especially important for those who are fully virtual, as they will have no in-person instruction. I do understand the concern regarding security, etc., but Google Meet does have an option for the teacher to mute the students, make their cameras not show them to mute the students, as well as record the lesson to be viewed by students who may not be able to be present during the live lesson. Why is our district not trying to utilize as much as possible in order to ensure children who are home receive an equally equitable edu education as those in the classroom? Thank you for that question. Um, we, as I mentioned earlier, we will revisit uh, what we're doing once the school year starts. Uh, we will continue to meet. We we're meeting weekly throughout the spring. Um, I anticipate us still uh, having constant communication in our committees to review what we're doing. But it's important to remember that um, every family is different. And some, many families, they want to be available to assist their child with the lesson. Some children on full remote may not be accessible at the same time each day. Some families will have children doing lessons outside of the Aquabog start and end of the school day. And we, we do want to be equitable and we want to make sure that we have that access for all students. Um, on the virtu fully virtual model, there will be a teacher available to the students throughout the day. So um, as um, a student has a question, they will be able to, uh, to touch base with their uh, teacher throughout the day. It will not be uh, a one and done um, that teacher that's on full virtual is going to be expected to be work to be in contact with students and working the same hours as the regular school day. So it, it's a challenge um, for many families. Um, we, we totally recognize that and we are hopeful that we'll be able to return to in person full instruction because there is no substitute to in-person instruction where there's a teacher in front of students on a daily basis. 
Thank you. How many students are enrolled in full virtual throughout the district in the elementary level? How many are specifically full virtual at Aquabog at the time of this presentation? I am aware at the Roanoke meeting this was shared. At this point, I don't have the exact numbers for full virtual across the district because the principals have been gathering the information besides the survey um, this week. I know that they've been fielding a lot of phone calls and emails. Uh, Mr. Miltenberg, I'm not sure if you know your specific numbers to Aquabob. Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but it's between 10 and 15 percent. Yeah, it's about uh, approximately 70 children the last time that we had an update, but there could be uh, more or less at this point. So. Okay, what are the consequences for kids spitting on other kids? How are you social distancing at recess? Uh, Mr. Carlson, you want to answer? Sure. And, and, um, we're really, uh, I was funny to his, I saw that question coming and I was taking a look at our family handbook that it, that is up now. And, you know, like, like any behavior, there's, there's tons of factors as far as what the behavior is, is trying to say, the circumstances of the behavior, the escalation of the behavior. It's, um, that's a, 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 a tough one to contemplate, right? Because we, we certainly will go out of our way to avoid that. And we don't expect to be in that situation too frequently, but you know, when a child exhibits a behavior, the, the child is demonstrating something. And, and Mr. Milberg and I, if you dealt with us this year, we know that we're going to work with the teacher, with the family immediately um, to get to the bottom of what that behavior is really trying to communicate. And, and making sure that we address the, the root cause of that behavior. Uh, as far as the distancing at recess, um, it would vary depending on the type of activity. If we're in a situation where we're able to um, really get moving and, and doing like the, some more active things, the distancing will be greater than if we're doing just some socializing um, sort of under normal circumstances or indoors. Are children allowed to share books from the classroom? We, you know, we recognize that books are a part of the school experience. So students would be able to take books out of a classroom library, for example, but not necessarily pass them back and forth with each other. And when they return the books, we're just going to be following the CDC guidelines for um, quote unquote quarantining the books. Um, just to make sure and be safe that there's no exposure for the next person who's going to be using that book. If there are cases at school, who is paying for the COVID tests? There are, uh, we're going to provide uh, on our website, there'll be a list of uh, facilities that you can go to that your insurance will cover and or the, I believe the Riverhead Health Center over at the county center here by the jail and the uh, courts has a free clinic as well. So if, if it's a financial burden, you're more than welcome to go there. They'll provide the test as well. When the students are at lunch, if the cafeteria opens, will the classroom be disinfected and or wiped down? I'd like to say yes. Um, again, we don't have that schedule finalized yet. So until we have a finalized schedule, I, I can't be certain of what the cleaning routines will be during the day. This is, during this, Ms. Stevenson, before you go on, just please note the last question that's there. Mm -hmm. So that, um, because we have 27 right now, so we'll, that we won't be taking any more questions. Okay. All right, during the spring, assignments were flexible in terms of submission. Will, will there be deadlines? Yeah, there will be deadlines on assignments, but the teacher will always work with the child and the family to make accommodations as necessary. Um, and the teacher will, you know, will guide the students to help them to understand what needs to be submitted when in order for them to stay on track when they're not in person. Uh, in the building. But again, flexibility is paramount here. We know that we want to support the families and that everyone's situation might be different. So your teacher, your child's teacher will work with you individually. 
Will the, kill, will the kindergarten children have an orientation or a visit to the school prior to the official first starting day? Our kindergarten teachers are working on something that, uh, you know, could allow some, uh, whether it's video or um, in person to have students come by the school or at least see the school so that, they, that they're more visually acquainted with what they're uh, going to be coming into on the first day. Um, so we will be um, providing an update on that as we get closer. Will the students have snack time? Yes. Has the district looked into purchasing fogging machines to sanitize the classrooms, bathrooms, cafeteria, et cetera, at the end of the day? Yes, we have looked into purchasing the foggers and ultimately we decided not to because the foggers are not proven to work. Uh, the CDC, Southern County Department of Health, State Department of Health, the EPA, our environmental consultants all agree that the best way to sanitize a surface is with direct contact and wiping. Um, plus, the foggers can create uh, possible uh, respiratory issues for those individuals using them. Once a kindergarten student is placed in a particular class, will they stay in that class regardless of the outcome of the kindergarten screening, or is there a chance they will be moved into a different class? In a typical year, the kindergarten screen that takes place in the spring gives us a lot of information that helps us to uh, place children to meet their individual needs. Um, we don't anticipate um, any major changes, but you know, based on the outcome of the case screening, if something did uh, need to be changed, you know, we'll work with the family on that. For those who will not attend in person, do they need to buy the school supplies? Uh, I think that de that depends on the particular supply um, that's that's on the list. So again, I think you can work with the individual teacher in the virtual learning to determine that. What will our isolation room look like? Uh, when possible, we will have a uh, one of the uh, nurses uh, sick beds, if you will, when possible, and or some chairs that will accommodate the students that they'll be in there for a short time. Are there any restrictions on the type of mask they can wear? We recommend a cloth mask that fits tightly over the face, covering the nose and mouth to prevent any aspirations from escaping and possibly infecting and or contaminating anyone else, and also to prevent the inhalation from anybody else. Um, will my child be marked absent if they do not log in by the end of the school day? If I'm not available to work with them, I work until after 5.30 p.m. No, they'll have the whole entire day up until midnight if you needed it. Um, and the teachers will be making adjustments to the attendance based on as long as they see that a child logged in that day, they'll be marked present. Will a student doing fully remote learning also receive instruction in the special areas? Uh, the special area teachers will be doing recordings of some lessons so that they can um, post those on Seesaw or Google Classroom for the students to complete. Has consideration been given to bathroom breaks where students are not directly supervised? In addition, will there be increased sanitizing in the bathroom areas after student use? Logistically, um, it's not possible to supervise every student who goes to the bathroom. So a lot of this really comes back to um, educating and training our students, just like our teachers do with uh, school routines every year. Um, they'll be a little bit different, but uh, you know we trust our teachers and our students to be able to do that. And the bathrooms will be sanitized throughout the day, as well as hand sanitizer um, dispensers will be placed outside of all the bathrooms in the building. Is it possible for virtual children starting in grade two to be hooked up with a child that is hybrid to create a pen pal program? They can practice communication as well as their ELA skills. I think that's a really interesting idea and uh, I'd love to explore that. That's very cool. So thank you for sharing that. 
And again, another question about interaction. Um, so will the full, full virtual students be required to have any interactive logins or after our assignment completion is enough, it would be possible for a student to never interact with his or her teacher this way? During the, um, the students on full remote, they will have the opportunity to interact with their teacher during the school hours, but the teachers are not available outside of the school day, whether they are in person or remote. There's a little bit of appreciation. So a quick thank you to everyone's hard work in getting these plans up and running. I know my kids are super excited to come to school, even with the masks, social distancing, and two days in person. They miss their teachers and their friends. Thank you. Uh, next, qu <laughs> next question. Will there be a review of last year's work to ensure that class can remember what they need in order to excel this upcoming year? Yes. So um, we, uh, our faculty has been working very hard since the spring uh, to do a little curriculum mapping. And what that is, is reassessing the curriculum uh, for each grade level uh, to see where the children really left off in the spring. Um, and so we're working on meeting them where they are. So uh, directly the answer to that question is yes. Uh, Mr. Miltenberg, I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit as far as Aquabog is concerned. Yeah, you know, I think our teachers have a challenging task, but it's one we've been preparing for since the spring, which is both to address any learning gaps um, from the previous year and, you know, reviewing the material from the previous year while charging forward uh, with the material this year. So it's not easy, but, um, you know, we've done a lot of work in the spring on that and we're going to continue to work on that. Another parent is asking for a little more clarification on how um when and how fully virtual students will be assessed? Will someone be contacting the parents over Zoom? And will this happen in the first few weeks of school? We'll be taking a look at that um, as to see what's the best course of action um, for how we can uh, do the assessment. We're, we're not going to be using the iReady assessment until by the end of September, I believe, is what we agreed on. So um, there is a possibility that we could um, look to see if we can get the full remote students to come in on an individual basis and um, just to have that testing done so that we would have the full panel if if I really can't accommodate us with um, with a remote option which I know that they're working on so we have uh, more decisions to make in that area and we'll let families know once we have those answers how will Wi-Fi be provided to families? Will they be using the built-in Wi-Fi on iPads through a cell plan? So uh, we have purchased mobile Wi-Fi hotspots uh, that we can loan out to families as we did uh, in the spring to some families that were in need. And the new devices that we're purchasing do have the built-in Wi-Fi component and we're purchasing plans for those devices for families that do not have access to Wi-Fi. Are the iPads that were sent home in the spring going to be current enough for what is going to be required? We'll probably be asking families to um, bring the, the, send the iPads in or bring them in. We have to work out that plan. Our technology department does want to get their hands on all the devices again so that they can make any updates that are necessary. Uh, but we recognize we don't want too much downtime for students. So we have to come up with a system to make that happen. And my son received an iPad in the spring and he's going to fourth grade. Will he receive a Chromebook or use the iPad that he received in the spring? Uh, we'll be making arrangements for a swap for, for that iPad for a Chromebook. Again, it may not happen right away, but we do have uh, a plan in the works to make that happen. Will school buses be sanitized between student pickups and drop-offs? So the plan is that our drivers are going to be cleaning the buses, the high touch area of the buses between each run. So the high touch areas are the banister getting onto the bus, the tops of the seats. There will be a full deep sanitation each evening and on Wednesdays when uh, most students are not going to school, that's when our drivers will be working uh, to fully sanitize the buses. Uh, someone asked to clarify, what is the protocol to request a Chromebook device? If it wasn't already uh, indicated on the survey, you can contact uh, either Mr. Miltenberg or Mr. Carlson and they'll make sure you're on the list or you can even uh, call and, and the clerical in the main office can take your information 
and uh, we'll make sure that you're on the list for a device. I think this question probably came in after a comment, um, so I'm not sure which comment it's responding to. It says, how is that then equitable? If a student is not in school, how is it equitable if they are not afforded the opportunity to ask questions live to the teacher during a lesson? Again, these lessons can be recorded. You can make a substitute by providing full live. Right. So, and, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So we are, I, I, I feel your angst and we're working um, as we uh, create this plan to assign teachers to full virtual learning. We're working on a, um, a schedule for the teacher. Um, so the teacher would be checking in, as Ms. Kona said earlier, with the students, uh, potentially some type of mini lesson so that they can interact and the children will be working on their own. And as Ms. Kona said earlier, they will be available during the school day uh, for the children to, to log back in, if you will. Um, and ask questions to the teachers. So I, I, I'm, I'm feeling confident about the way that it will be set. Um, Ms. Tona, I'm sorry that I uh, jumped in on that. Uh, That's fine, you said it well. Thank you. And then again, I think this is in response to an earlier comment. Um, I do not think anyone is asking for live for the entire school day, but more of a model shared earlier in this chat. And again, Next once the school year begins, we'll be reviewing our process and our protocols. And if there are ways that we can improve things, we will. Will the children be separated by outlined boxes at recess? I know I've had discussions with some of the principals at the other elementary schools. So we're exploring all opportunities uh, or possibilities for the kids to blow off that steam or that excess energy during their recess. Um, that was one of the options that was thrown out uh, as an option. We're still exploring the best way that we can uh, let the kids get out, get some fresh air, possibly take a mass break, maybe stretch their legs a little bit. Uh, we try not to, uh, at least uh, in my opinion, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, and, I think a lot of the principals are on board is we don't want to just have them standing on a field in a box. We want them to be able to move around a little bit and get, uh, and ex get rid of, expel of that, some of that excess energy and get some fresh air. So we're exploring possibilities. Everything is on the table right at this point, but we'll, we'll figure out something where the kids can uh, have a little fun during the school day and socialize and still do it safely with their masks on. If and when we're able to resume five day a week classes, will fully virtual students be allowed to transition into classrooms and the school? Yes, yes, of course, that's what we want. <laughs> yes. Um, will my fully virtual child have the opportunity to meet their teachers prior to the start of school face to face so they are more visually acquainted with their teacher? Uh, that's a possibility. We have to look into that and figure out how we can do that and maintain social distance, um, but it is definitely a possibility. Um, and we'll let families know if we can make that happen. How will nebulizers be used as these are aerosoled? This has come up with a couple of the nurses and the nurses have the um, expertise in how to administer and use the nebulizers in such a fashion in the nurse's office so as not to uh, endanger anyone else or any other student. What will be the format of Mr. Miltonberg's announcements? I was uncomfortable with my children in my Facebook. How can we watch? Yeah, we started uh, on Facebook just because it was an easy uh, platform, um, but we'll take a look at that and maybe we, we're also considering a YouTube and having a daily YouTube channel that we can, that we can stream. Um, so we'll take a look at that for sure. That's good to know. If my child's virtual teacher is from a different school in the district, then we go live to a five-day model. Does he have to go to that other elementary school? No, that's a good question. Uh, hopefully at some point we get the, the green light that we can go back to um, full five day a week, full time instruction. And we may need um, a few days to, to work it all out. But the goal is to put all the teachers back into their home buildings 
and put all the students back into their home buildings. And um, obviously that's our ultimate goal this school year is to get back to normal. And then our last question, if I filled out the survey and want to do remote learning, do I have to notify the school again? And what day does full remote begin? If you filled out, filled out the survey, you should be good. Um, wait until you get your mailing and that should confirm your request. If your mailing comes back and your request is not there, be sure to contact Mr. Miltonberg and Mr. Carlson. Um, full remote, we're planning on September 3rd for full remote. That's the first day of school for all. Um, depending if they're on the hybrid approach, depends on their cohort, whether they come in, but um, everything should be accessible. Just keep in mind that it is difficult uh, for that first day if it's not in person. Uh, we ask for your patience. Uh, it may, there may be a learning curve for some people on, on logging into uh, the platforms. We do plan on providing some PD for families to help them navigate the platforms as well but um, that may not come until the following week. Everything is coming very rapidly. And um, this was a very difficult school year to plan for. I give kudos to all of our administrators, everyone on this call, all of our teachers, all of our staff members, everyone is working harder than they've ever worked before. We have a very hard working staff here but um, it's, it's a challenge that no one has ever experienced before. So we anticipate everyone's patience and understanding as we navigate through this difficult time to provide the safest and um, most appropriate education for our students that we can during this challenge. So um, Mr. Miltonberg, you wanna sum up the, uh, finish up our uh, conversation here? Yeah, thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate your time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. And just reach out, call, email us. Uh, we, we're here to help. So anytime you can reach out and we'll make it work. Thank you, everyone. Be well.